Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. A 4 to 5,000 year old stone monument with 144 standing blocks of granite, each more than 6 feet tall, has been uncovered at the bottom of a reservoir in Spain, and only because of a year long drought. The site, known as Dolmen de Guadal Peril, has been dubbed the Spanish Stonehenge. But although the stones are smaller than Britain's iconic structure, in Spain they are more numerous. They're arranged in circles, but their history and origins are somewhat of a mystery. For a number of months, western Spain has been ravaged by a drought, exposing the large granite blocks for the first time in more than 50 years. But the site isn't actually a new discovery, with a German priest and amateur archaeologist, Hugo Obermeyer, discovering it in 1925, although the Romans were also thought to be aware of the site. But in the 1960s, General Franco ordered the construction of a hydroelectric dam in Perilida de la Mata, near Cáceres in Extremadura. This caused a valley that was bordering the Tagus River to be flooded, and the disappearance of this megalithic stone monument. These waters have certainly hindered the preservation of the site, but it is thought that the stone surrounded a central chamber which most interpret as being used for sun worship. Talking to the Times newspaper, Angel Castano, the president of Perilida Cultural Association, said, the stones have been brought from about 5 kilometers away to form this temple, which we think was used to worship the sun. He continues, In that way, it has similarities to Stonehenge, but is obviously smaller. People here had heard about them, but had never seen them. We want the authorities to move these stones to the banks of the reservoir and to use them as a tourist attraction, as few people come to this area. Some believe the stone monument is 4,000 years old, built by the Celts living in Iberia. Radiocarbon dating of the soil layer that the stone rests on is 4 to 5,000 years old, far younger than the first monolithic structures of Europe, such as those found in Brittany, which date to 4,794 BC. But they are of a similar age to Stonehenge. But calling it the Spanish Stonehenge is more of a marketing message than an accurate description. The stones of Stonehenge are up to 30 feet in height, whilst those in Spain are around 6 feet. But, as stated, at the Spanish site there are 144 stones which are made of granite, compared to the 93 surviving stones of Stonehenge. Some of the Spanish stones are also engraved with serpents. Between 4 and 5,000 years ago, monolithic structures were being built across Europe, and it is very likely that this is the work of one culture that had spread across the continent from the Neolithic into the Bronze Age. This practice of erecting stones began around 6,500 years ago in France, but then spread out across Europe as people migrated. But, of course, with the discovery of Gebekli Tepe, the true ancestral home of the European megalithic stone builders may well be Anatolia, which is the modern day Turkey. Long term preservation plans have not yet been laid out, although discussions are taking place. But talks can't continue for much longer because action really needs to be taken rather quickly, whilst the drought continues and the stones are accessible. The monoliths are already showing signs of damage after being submerged for so long, and if it is allowed to continue for a prolonged period of time, the result could be catastrophic. It's a shame to have to move the stones, but there seems to be no other option, and I personally think it's a better idea than leaving them at the bottom of a reservoir. The positions and layout can be mapped and 3D modelled, and if they are to be reconstructed close by, this can be done with a high level of accuracy. And because the stones have been mapped in their original location, archaeoastronomy research can also be undertaken. Whatever happens, I think it's important that we preserve as many historical artefacts as possible, especially from truly ancient times. Legends have surrounded these stones for many years, and Castano said, We grew up hearing about the legend of the treasure hidden beneath the lake, and now we finally get to view them. There certainly may have been treasures buried beneath the stones once upon a time, but for us now, the treasures are the stones themselves. Thank you very much for watching this news update from Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.